Biggest win of the year? I'd sure say so. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on the show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015. I've been hosting this show uh, for over five years, and I'm a life long giants fan thank you for making locked on giants your first listen every day we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts including youtube um where we are live right now so check us out there if you have not already if you're listening to this later um and please hit that subscribe button wherever it is that you're following the show today's episode is brought to you by monopoly go i admit it i have a competitive side if you didn't know already and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. And coming up on today's show, uh, yeah, the Giants just pulled off what I think was their biggest win of the year roughly 24 hours ago. I intent, I wish I could have had this episode out earlier, but I had a couple appointments I wasn't able to do so this morning. So, um... Anywho, the Giants win this game in Miami, and it was huge. I think it was absolutely huge. They fell behind three to nothing. They're having a you know rough start record wise, and just in various facets. You know, we went over what exactly is behind. You know, the uh, basically, I don't think they're the point of yesterday's episode was saying they're not this bad. They're not the third worst team in the National League, which their record was, but. So to go into Miami against a team that was three and thirteen, this is Major League Baseball though. Like you cannot just say, "Oh, they're three and thirteen. You you should sweep." That's not how it works in baseball. The Marlins can beat you any night for sure. Like, and also they're not that bad. They're not as bad as they're playing. And um, so anyway, the falling behind three to nothing when an, when you have an offense that has struggled to score runs all season for the most part. Um, well, outside of the first few, first series, I think they did pretty well that first first series of the year. Uh, but then it's been a struggle after that. Oh, and then the one game in Tampa. But falling behind 3 nothing, you know, this is something that they haven't really done yet, is they hadn't had a comeback win like this. And they did it when they needed to, and they did it late. They did it with three runs in the bottom of this or in the top of the seventh and actually one in the fourth and then three in the seventh. And so it's just huge. It's huge for the morale and confidence of a team to be able to come back because then you start to believe. I mean, it can take a lot of pressure off you. First of all, seven and ten looks a heck of a lot better than six and eleven. And, you know, I must point out I as I pointed out yesterday, in 2020, they started out 8-16, and 16, and it was a 60-game season, and they that team wasn't nearly as good as this team on paper, um, and they started out 8-16, and 16, and they were above 500 going into the final weekend of the season, of the 60-game season, so it didn't take, like, it's just too small of a sample to get too worked up about, but at the same time, I mean, you just want, like, every win, every loss counts. And this one was big. I just felt, I feel like it's big. It takes the pressure off a little bit. Maybe tonight you can just go out there, go out there and just kind of, you know, have a little more free and easy feeling in the batter's box and put up some runs without feeling that pressure. You know, I think that that's what, that's the effect that this kind of game can have on you. On the flip side, I must point out the Marlins, like from their perspective, when you're going through what they're going through, which is, that was a brutal loss. Their record is three and fourteen. Like I feel like psychologically, that can be a place where you're like you get mad and then you end up playing well uh, because you, you know, you just kind of lose. You just 
you're like, we're due, we're owed, and then you just break out. And so you, it's these teams are dangerous. I, I like, I see three and fourteen, and I don't see like, oh, easy win. I see danger. I see you got to take these guys seriously. You got to show up. You got to play well to win a game, and that's true in baseball, just no matter what. But this rally in the seventh. Let me just break it down. If we go to the uh, top of the seventh inning. Uh, Matt Chapman started out, it was Jazz Chisholm made a diving catch on him. I, I actually forgot about that until right now to start off this inning in which the Giants came back and went ahead. They were down three to one. And then they, at the end of the inning, they were up four to three. And that was the final score. Uh, Matt Chapman line, line drive to center and Jazz Chisholm made a diving catch. And so it's like, dang, you know, Mike Yastrzemski also made a diving catch earlier. So a little payback, you know, one team to another, but um, it's like, gosh, if you're going to come back, you need those to fall. But no, Tyro Estrada got things started by ripping a double down the left field line. And he's one of the guys, you know, early season mailbags and whatnot. I'm getting questions about how much patience do you have with a guy like Tyro Estrada, blah, blah, blah. You know, and it's like what I say is track record, track record, track record. And sure enough, I mean, look what he's done on this road trip, right? He had a two homer game. He yesterday that was his only hit but nonetheless it was a huge hit um and so you know i he's i'm not gonna judge the first like 14 games of 2024 ahead of everything he's done before that right like we put it all together and that's a better picture um so estrada doubles with one out and then yaz there's a pitching uh no then there's a wild pitch that gets Estrada to third with one out. Mike Yastrzemski walks and um, so runner on uh, third less than two outs and Patrick Bailey comes out. This is a situation where if you ground into a double play, inning ends, you're still down three to one and you probably lose the game. But Bailey hit a sacrifice fly. It didn't, you know, it was then three to two. You're still one swing away. You got, you know, the eighth and the ninth to come. So it's like, great, you know, you, you're closer, but you still wish you could pull through and what and and they did they they were able to to get that big hit that they've been lacking all season so Nick Ahmed then walks so this is a big mistake to walk Yastrzemski and Ahmed to bring up Jung Hu Lee but then they go to a lefty and this to me was like the best at bat of the of the season maybe for the Giants but for Jung Hu Lee who's really hit into some bad luck all season long um but two outs down a run and the at bat that he threw up on a left hand threw up the bat the at bat that he threw together on a left-handed pitcher um not saying it's you know Randy Johnson out there but at the same time like a left on left new to the major leagues Jung Hu Lee um and the at bat that he put together to then ultimately line a single within a two strike count to left to the opposite field that tied the game at 3 Huge at bat for Jung Hu Lee. And then Wilmer Flores, who had already pinch hit in the game. So it was his second at bat. Um, you know, it was an 0 2 count, I believe, on him. And he lined a single. And that's, again, track record. I was just talking on yesterday's show about it. Wilmer Flores has been like 30% below average. But like last year, he was like 36% above average. And in his Giants career, he's been well above average. So. You just expect when Wilmer Flores comes up, he's going to be Wilmer Flores. It's not going to be necessarily the guy he's been for the first two weeks. And that's what happened. And it was a huge hit. And all of this with two outs. They tied the game and they took the lead. So coming up in just a minute, we're, get, we're going to continue to discuss this game, the importance of this game, and also the pitching side. Things got crazy. We had an ejection on the Marlins side. Camilo Duvall, pitch clock nonsense once again we'll get into all of that in just a minute and before we do today's episode is brought to you in part by monopoly go i've been told i'm a competitive person by uh just about anyone who knows me actually do you think that's true if you don't know by now let me tell you i am okay well yeah i've got a competitive competitive side we all do 
and my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play not uh, on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. The best part is messing with my friends, though. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. But now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is, and I want that to be me. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends if you want, or you can just be competitive and try to beat them. And people all around the world you can team up with in timed tournaments to earn huge rewards. So go get in the game and join your friends. Download Monop Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. Today's episode is also brought to you in part by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite event like I just did going down to San Diego and Los Angeles to start the season to see the Giants should not have to be stressful. And it wasn't for me thanks to Game Time. I bought a lot of tickets in my day and I've often been very disappointed with the experience, but that's not the case any longer with Game Time where you get panoramic images of seat views and you get the game time guarantee these are just it's the 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 two things for me that jump off the page the most when it comes to game time and i mean they've also got things like flash sales zone deals and but like the the lowest price guarantee let me just tell you if you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference not just 100 percent, 110 percent. and then viewing the images of the seats is paramount. How am I supposed to know if I've never been there before, if I or if it's been 10 years, I need to know what is like the angle look like. And so you get that with Game Time. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account and use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N M L B for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, as promised, we are going to continue to run down what I think was the Giants' biggest win of the year. Let me know if you agree. I I, I think it's no question. Like they, it was their biggest comeback. Def, you know, they hadn't come back from a three or more run deficit. Uh, so far and it's the Marlins I get it. it's the Marlins but in baseball that's not how it works you don't just like oh they're bad so we're gonna sweep them no that's not how it works you've got to go out there and play well otherwise another major league team can beat you on any given night and Giants uh they could have folded but they didn't and that is big for the morale and I think that that's key so thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow. Oh, yes, we're going to be breaking down game two. This is where you start to see, like, they just are rolling out a pretty good starting pitcher in every single game. So right now, uh, right now, today, the Giants will send Jordan Hicks to the mound. Um, and he's been awesome. Facing Ryan Weathers, the left-handed pitcher, who has a career ERA of 561, uh, but this season he's uh, made three starts and his ERA is 257. So I'm going to have to dig into like is what's going on there. That that is he actually good now or what's going on? So I'll, we'll get into that a little bit later with Ryan Weathers, formerly of the San Diego Padres, first round pick. Yeah, in 2018, they Padres trade everybody. It's crazy. Pod. How did he end up on the Marlins? I don't remember. But anyway, Jordan Hicks looking to continue his early season dominance, really. So um, reminder that you can catch every pitch of the Giants hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the XS, X, S, XM app and search the word Giants. So this game. Uh, the Giants, like I said, the big hit coming from Jung Hu Lee and then Wilmer Flores, you know, I like I like the way I just want to say like I like the way that Bob Melvin has managed this team early on like I don't really have many complaints he's kind of um, 
quickly he kind of rides the hot hand in a sense like with the relievers like Ryan Walker and Tyler Rogers and Camilo Duvall like those are the guys I would have gone to too you know like um, I was a little honestly surprised that he went to Duvall and not Rogers in the situation that ultimately ended up leading to the ejection of Marlins manager Skip Schumacher um, because it was a lefty who came in to hit and and going to Taylor Rogers. I guess maybe the issue would be if that guy got on base, then who was coming up next? And you don't want to have Taylor Rogers necessarily facing a righty with the game on the line. You just want to go to your closer who's barely pitched this season. So we will get into that whole situation, uh, which was crazy. Giants once again uh, proved that hits with runners in scoring position is a non-predictive stat. Like just because you've done poorly doesn't mean you will continue to do poorly. And just because you've done well doesn't mean you will continue to do well. And yeah, because they hit 500, you know, it's three for six. And I don't. I also constantly beat this drum that I don't like the term scoring position because if you had a homer, Everybody's in scoring position, including the guy in the batter's box. Um, they only had one extra base hit. The starting pitcher for the Marlins, Edward Cabrera, was shoving. I mean, he had 10 strikeouts, was throwing 94 mile an hour change ups. Uh, no thank you. But as soon as he came out of the game, the Giants jumped on the next pitcher for three earned runs in two thirds of an inning. And that was it. That was all they, that was it. That was the game. And so, Marlins do have some better relievers, but they were kind of unavailable last night, and that was a blessing for the Giants, and they needed it badly. But anyway, like the decision to basically like pinch hit with Wilmer Flores for Lamont Wade, you know, for example, um, and you notice Austin Slater is still pinch hitting for either. I mean, it's mostly it's Yastrzemski usually when he pinch hits. Um, you could. You know, certain situations it could be Conforto, and there was—it's funny. Somebody on Twitter was like, "There was a situation where Conforto came up. Was it bases loaded, or I think it was bases loaded later in that inning where they scored a bunch of runs?" Um, I think, and the person was like mad that that Melvin didn't pinch hit Slater for Conforto, and while you know, I had the same thought like. Oh, man, if you go to Austin Slater there, you could really break this game open. But at the same time, you're going to make people mad no matter what decision you make there. And I think, honestly, more people would have been upset if they took out Conforto. But you're probably upgrading defensively there if you pinch hit and you're upgrading your chances. I think, like, despite the slow start for Austin Slater, I do think um Slater against the lefty I'll take that over Conforto against the lefty in a high leverage situation even though Conforto has had the best start offensively of any giant maybe outside of Lamont Wade um so who also gets pinch hit for so anyway it's like Bob Melvin he gets like he's not Farhan Zaidi is not calling down like telling him to make pinch hit decisions this is just logical like Austin he like Bob Melvin understands Austin Slater hits lefties really well. Mike Yastrzemski has been really struggling. And, you know, Lamont Wade has a tr long track record of not hitting lefties very well. But I like that he's given him this season some opportunities against lefties. And, he, and he's actually shown pretty well for himself in those at-bats and drawn some walks and had some hits even. Um for the longest time, he didn't have like a career hit against a lefty. It was like 30-something plate appearances before he finally got a hit against a left-handed pitcher in his career. And so that'll be interesting to follow as the season goes on. Is like, does Wade kind of morph into an everyday player? But at the same time, it's like Wilmer Flores is on this roster, and that's kind of his lane. And if you want Flores to get his at-bats, that's where they're coming from right now with Jorge Soler being the everyday DH. Fortunately, I do not want to jinx them. I don't believe in jinxes, but at the same time, here I am saying this, but they have been pretty healthy so far. But if they if there were an injury somewhere, that definitely could, you know, Wilmer could be thrust into everyday playing time. And, you know, you could see, you know, Marco Luciano or Luis Matos or Elliot Ramos or Wade Meckler or whoever, but... Fortunately, they've been they've been healthy 
uh, so far this season. I'm totally, I don't believe in jinxes, but at the same time, I probably, I probably jinxed them right there. So anyway, just a great game for the Giants. Uh, on the mound, we haven't talked about on the mound at all, and that's what I'm going to want to get into in more detail, talking about Kyle Harrison, his start. Uh, didn't necessarily like start well, gave up another homer. He's given up at least one homer in all of his starts so far this year. But six innings, I mean, efficient strike throwing for the most part. I mean, yeah, one walk. Uh, and then the debacle that that kind of transpired with the pitching change that ended up leading to the ejection of the Marlins manager. We'll get into that momentarily and before we do. Today's episode is brought to you in part by LinkedIn Jobs. Are you struggling to close deals? B2B selling is tougher than ever, and that's why I want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high-value customers, drive higher revenue, and increase sales performance. Sales Navigator helps you target the right buyers, surface key signals such as, such as job changes or which accounts you should prioritize and shows you hidden allies so you can find those buyers that are most likely to convert fueled by linkedin's 1 billion member platform sales navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data enabling you to unlock conversations with the people that matter right now you can try linkedin sales navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com locked on that is linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash locked on and get started. All right, here we go. We're going to discuss the pitching side of this biggest win of the year, as I'm calling it. Um, huge win huge win because now i mean look you still got a you still got two more games here in miami but one day at a time as they say and uh you know just you know at the very least if you just win one of the next two games you're going to come away from this being like all right it was fine it was a fine road trip because they lose the series in tampa but this is a series you should win i mean I, let me make no bones about it like this is a series you should win because you're better than the miami marlins at the same time you're on the road blah 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 but um thanks again for making locked on giants your first listen every day every day is tomorrow breaking down jordan hicks versus ryan weathers we'll get into what i'm seeing in the numbers for ryan weathers at the end of today's show Remember, you can catch every pitch of the Giants' hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Giants. Also, excuse me, not only do we cover your team every day, but now we are giving you instant episodes after every single game. Check out Locked On, uh, the Locked On Giants postcast. You've probably seen it right here on the Locked On Giants podcast feed, as well as streaming on the Locked On Sports Bay Area YouTube channel. Get rapid reaction to all the biggest moments with the Locked On Giants postcast. That's hosted by Eric Engel, not me. Um, and he does a great job. And he, uh, after every game, if you want that instant reaction and you want to talk about it and be in the you know community of Giants fans in the comments and like the, the live chat or whatever, you could do that with Eric Engel after every game, including today. So check it out. And then that ends up going on this feed. So it's just an extra thing that we provide to you um, as Giants fans here at Locked On. So anyway, the pitching side of this game and then looking ahead. So Kyle Harrison, six innings, three runs, two strikeouts. That's you know not exactly what you want to see, but at the same time, uh, they, you know, he kept him in the game and he pitched pretty well. I just would have liked to have seen uh, some more swing and miss, some more strikeouts. But so on the season, when I look at the numbers for Kyle Harrison, we're looking at a guy whose strikeout rate is below league average, which is interesting because he was like such a strikeout pitcher in the minors. So we'll see how that like continues to develop. What's been awesome is that in the major leagues, now 57 and two thirds innings, his walk rate is 
better than average. And this is a guy who that was his biggest kind of issue in the minor leagues was command. And so he seems to have found something um, with his strike throwing ability at the major league level. And that's a good sign. But something we've also seen is that in his brief young career, he's allowed about two home runs per nine innings, which is about twice as many as what you would want. And so as a result, he's got a ERA this season of 470, expected ERA of 455, fielding independent pitching is 505. So, you know, he's got some work to do. I would, you know, he's that's why I thought signing Blake Snell was important, and they did. Um, although Snell has also struggled, but it's been two starts. And as we've said a couple of times now, Snell struggled through his first nine seven nine starts of of last year and then went on a historic run and won the Cy Young Award easily so you know a few starts does not define a season is what I'm trying to say so but anyway I mean he pitched well Kyle Harrison um gave up a homer a solo shot there was an error behind him um I'd just like to see some more kind of dominance uh out of him but also it's one game and so I'm not gonna freak out about it Tyler Rogers, clean inning. Great to see Ryan Walker, two thirds of an inning, gave up a hit. And then they went to bring in Doval, right? Like it was clear Melvin was signaling right handed pitcher, right? And so it's not Taylor Rogers who's left handed, but Taylor Rogers was the only guy warming up down there in the bullpen. And so there was miscommunication. There was, uh, and it's funny, if it was Kapler, he would get roasted to no end for this because they would say, Kapler didn't have the right guy warming up, you know, and, but Melvin didn't, you know, ultimately it falls on the manager. I would have said the same thing if it was Kapler, but I'm sure it wasn't Kapler's or Melvin's fault. Um, He, I'm sure said, I want Doval up, not Taylor Rogers, or maybe he wanted both of them up, but Doval was not warming up and he got called into the game, but he wasn't, he hadn't started throwing. And so Taylor Rogers was the only guy down there warming up. And long story short, he like jogs in and then Melvin's like, no, 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 no. I want the righty, the righty. And then the umpires are like, righty, 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 calling to the righty. But, you know, Duvall wasn't warming up yet. Um, So it led to this whole debacle with the Marlins manager, Skip Schumacher, getting ejected because he was mad about you can't just, I mean, there's timers now, like you've got to do this in a timely fashion. And Duvall wasn't, hadn't even started to warm up. And so it like really Skip Schumacher had an argument. I would be ticked off if if I was the Marlins host today about this. Um, And then they wanted a violation based on when Duvall just has all kinds of problems with the, like, but this, the part I just described has nothing to do with him really. It was more a problem with they didn't have him warming up when they meant to. Like the dugout to the bullpen communication, there was a something lost in translation, but um there were they had to use two mound visits and a step off. Like they had to tell him to step off in order to avoid pitch clock violations in this outing. But it ended up being a four out save with two strikeouts. He gave up one hit to Luis Arise. Um, so it was like a gutsy save and Melvin after the game was highly complimentary and basically stated the fact that, uh, that Duvall didn't really warm up. He said, quote, I thought it was unbelievable. And I told him that that can mess you up a little bit, not only having to do it and come in and get the big out in the eighth, then have, then to have to go back out in the ninth and keep your composure like that. I can't be more impressed. So that's nice to hear, you know, the manager supporting his player, especially because there was it was the coaching staff's fault for not having him up, even though they were calling for him to come into the game. He wasn't even up. So anyway, Doval just nailed it down. And so that's when it's like it's nice to have one of the best relievers in the game on your team. But also he doesn't hold runners well. They kind of run wild on him. And then the pitch clock like he may be more affected than anybody by it. And you've got to have Matt Chapman like came in with a huge like timeout called for a mound visit. Like, cause you can have position players do mound visits and there were 
two mound visits that needed to be called to avoid a pitch clock violation, including one in a 3-2 count that would have been a walk if Chapman hadn't been on high red alert. And then Duvall had to step off. Like, that's the thing. If, you've got, if you have runners on, you can step off, and it counts as a disengagement, and you get two free ones. Third one, you have to pick the guy off. Um, but otherwise, if there's nobody on to avoid a pitch clock violation, you can take a mound visit, but you only have so many of those. There's a limit on mound visits in a game. And so it's complicated, but Duvall, it's got to be managed. Like it's something that they have to to be all aware of when he's in the game because it's been a problem for him. Especially it was a problem early last season and it's being a, it's a problem early this season. So hopefully as things move on, he kind of it didn't seem to be a problem as things went on uh towards the end of last year, but we'll see. But it was a gutsy save and a good job. Uh, he had good stuff last night. So Ryan Weathers, I just lastly want to look up, why does this guy have an ERA in the twos? Yep, as I expected, the ex- <laughs> he has an ERA of 2.57. The expected ERA is 6.06. So uh, he's been lucky is what I'm seeing. His fielding independent pitching is almost five. Expected fielding independent pitching is five and a half. Like he's not striking people out. He's walking people. He hasn't given up a lot of homers, but in his career, he gives up. He's given up almost two homers per nine innings. Doesn't strike a lot of people out. Walks guys at an above average rate. So, you know, you're gonna see probably. I have not looked at the lineup, although it's probably out now. But you're gonna probably see Flores and Slater and all these righties, Soler, Chapman. So this is a this is a guy you should go out there and just beat up, like potentially, right? You never know, but in theory go beat this guy up and hopefully Jordan Hicks. I do worry a little bit like Hicks can't keep up a one ERA, but just, you know, six innings, three runs, seven innings, three runs. Like that would be great. You know, you definitely take that. Um, So anyway, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Every day or tomorrow, we'll be breaking this one down in South Florida with Ryan Weathers versus Jordan Hicks and can the Giants offense kind of carry this momentum into this game and kind of jump on this guy. I, I feel like they might be able to. Like maybe this is a game for Chapman or Solaire to kind of break out with some power. Um, maybe Slater break out with some power. Flores, like a lot of guys are due to kind of break out with some power. And so those right-handed bats are going to be key tonight against the lefty. And then Jordan Hicks, like can he just like you don't have to have a one ERA, but can you just like have a, n- another solid start? That's what that's what I'll be looking out for. So anyway, once again, my name is Ben Caspic. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Caspic, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out so much. So thank you in advance and thank you to everyone who's done so already. I can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thanks again for listening today. You are now Locked on Giants.